Last week, I evaluated our winter outlook, and the results were a mixed bag. Okay in general, but mediocre to poor on the details. Today, I'd like to highlight two phenomena that were largely responsible for not only the tenor of this winter, but also for why it was so different from last winter. Now, given that weather systems in the mid-latitudes tend to move west to east, what's happening to our west typically gets the most attention. But on longer time scales, what's going on downstream over the North Atlantic often controls the flow of weather traffic. A measure called the North Atlantic Oscillation, NAO for short, helps us visualize this. Now, the NAO has two modes or phases. To differentiate them, we typically look around jet stream level, where sometimes the flow over the North Atlantic is really, really fast, a pattern that would favor an unusually strong tailwind for a flight between New York and London, for example. We call this the positive phase of the NAO. With this type of pattern in the winter, both storms and cold air masses tend to exit the eastern United States quickly, and the straightness of the flow means that storms tend to be relatively weak. This pattern ruled the winter of 2019-2020, which was mild and relatively snow-free in the eastern U.S. Now, the alter ego of this pattern is very wavy, with a persistent bulge in the flow towards Greenland and a dip or trough that on average hangs out near the east coast. This is the negative phase of the North Atlantic Oscillation, and this pattern dominated this winter, particularly December through the first half of February. With this setup, cold air masses aren't in a hurry to exit the eastern U.S., and the trough near the coast favors storminess, including nor'easters, of which we had a few this winter. Another difference between the last two winters involves the infamous polar vortex, a ring of fast winds in the stratosphere that's generally centered on the pole. About every other winter, on average, the high-altitude air inside this ring warms quickly and dramatically, what's called a sudden stratospheric warming. And when that happens, the polar vortex weakens and often splits, and that has a trickle-down effect into the lower atmosphere. Here's a comparison of the vortex during the winter of 2019-2020 on the left with this past winter on the right. Notice how on the left, the tube of fast winds stays intact the entire winter while this past winter on the right, a sudden stratospheric warming in early January caused the polar vortex to become weak and wavy and split into pieces. And although this happens 20 to 30 miles up, it favors the negative phase of the North Atlantic Oscillation, the colder and stormier mode that dominated this winter. From a forecasting standpoint, sudden stratospheric warmings and the phase of the North Atlantic Oscillation are not very predictable more than a few weeks ahead of time, if that. As a result, with some minor exceptions, seasonal forecasting remains a big challenge. Stay tuned. Our extended forecast is next.